Oh, what up, gang? Gang? Welcome back to another episode of Wednesday Night Smack Talk. And this week, it is a little bit different. Now, last week, we did stomping ground predictions, and uh, we, we're going to go over that. But first, I got I to gotta say... This is a pre-recorded episode. We're trying out this new format. I'm going to be premiering it still, so it's still going to kind of be like a live chat a little bit. Uh, let me know how you like it afterwards. If you want me to keep doing it, if you want me to go back to live. Uh, either way, works for me. I can do both, so I'll do that. I'm planning on uh, keeping the uh, predictions videos live. Kind of like how pay-per-views used to be live, and all the other ones used to be uh, pre-recorded. But now everything's live for WWE, so I don't know. But for me, I kind of want to. I'm gonna see if this is if this works for you guys. If it doesn't, then oh well. Uh, we'll go back to doing a live a live uh, stream of Wednesday night Smack Talk. Okay. So now that I got the formalities out of the way there, uh, I was going to go into doing the results, as I always do, but if you listened last week, you would have heard what was said by a man we haven't seen in a good little while. Yes, El Toquito Violente showed up. At the very end of Smack Talk, after the predictions, when Darcy was chanting his website's name, El Thakito Violente came with a threat to me and my best buddy Joe, the tag team champions, the greatest tag team champions in KKPL history. And if who he said is who I think it is, then he is in for a world of pain. You can't bring... Him here. This is my sacred ground, Takito. You can't bring that fucker here. I will have to bury him along with you. Listen, I liked you. But if you're conducting business with him, then I can't even support anything you do now. You're going to have to be gone. You're going to have to be kicked out of this entire fucking league. And if you want a match against me and Joe... The best buddies, the best tag team ever. We can provide that. Because if you're trying to bring that little shithead in here, I'm going to have to stomp him out before he even gets a chance to shine, alright? I know how he is. I know how he takes over. He's done it before. He's done it before. You don't know what you're getting into by conducting business with him, alright? I'm going to try and help you. By stomping out this little rebellion, this little match before it even goes down. You're not winning these tag titles, alright? You're not going to do them. You're not going to get this, alright? I'm going to get you out of this league before he causes any trouble. And that match will be at Extreme Rules. Next pay-per-view. I'm going to get this over with as soon as possible, okay? I don't want have I don't want to have to deal with any of his bullshit. Any of your bullshit either. I'm sure Joe doesn't want to deal with. So we're going to find out just how much business you've been conducting with him. Come extreme rules. So tune in for that on July, well, not July 14th, but like the Wednesday before Extreme Rules, show up or don't show up. I would much rather you not show up. I don't want to have to hear his voice. But if you do, know that we're going to beat you easily. And you better leave. You better not try and hang around and conduct any more business with any of my roster members, all right? I care about them. Don't take them from me this time. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we will do the results for Stomping Grounds. Uh, 
Stomping Grounds was a very uh, predictable kind of pay-per-view, at least uh, predictable in the sense that they both predict pretty much the same thing. They got a few, they got a good amount wrong, uh, but they pretty much all predicted the same thing except for two matches, Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage for the WWE Championship, and, well, uh, you figure Darcy, you know, Ziggler Club leader, would pick Ziggler and Lou would pick Kofi, uh, but no, Lou picked Ziggler and Dol uh, Darcy picked Dolph, no, what, no. Darcy picked Kofi, and Lou picked Dolph. There you go. And uh, Kofi Kingston jumped over Dolph to escape the cage. So, uh, no matter what, right there, we had a tie. And actually, that was the deciding factor, because I couldn't remember the other match until just now, which actually happened before. So, uh, that was the deciding match whenever it happened live. Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. Darcy picked Bailey to retain. And Lou picked Alexa Bliss to win. Uh yeah, Alexa did not win. And Bailey won after some kind of Nikki Cross uh interference trying to help Alexa or trying to beat up Bailey and it backfired and yeah. So Bailey won. Uh, the two they differed on, Darcy got both of them right over Lou. So Darcy retains the title. Sadly, this is a very sad day. And uh, I told Darcy to retain the title because he didn't know for sure. He was like, did I retain it? Because he knew he was going up against great competition in Lou, so he, he didn't know he was going to retain. Uh, but he did wind up retaining, and I told him. So he sent me... This. <coughs> Lou. More like Lou Zer. Whoa! Got it! a small dick. I'm the champ. I have an average size penis that's fully functional. Just look how much I'm nothing, yo. Nothing, yo. Like it's nothing, though. Lou couldn't predict shit if he was named after the toilet. Which he did. Did I mention how small his dick is? I don't think I did. It's as small as the opposite of big. Got him. This is Lou's funeral. Throwing some flowers. I'm the fucking champ. I hold all the power. Toilet boy Lou, open your mouth and say, oh, this golden god needs a golden shower. I'm just too clever at predicting whatever The best champ ever, the one they will remember And guess what? what? Sebi is transgender! Undefeated, undisputed Never predicted a single match wrong in my entire life The KKPL Super Heavyweight Champion of the World Bada boom, champ shit only How you doing? Darcy, congratulations you have retained your title. Now at Extreme Rules, you will be having another opponent announced at a later date. Not this week. I'm going to keep you on your toes. I'm going to keep you waiting, Darkhold. I'm going to keep you waiting. But I do have another match besides that tag team match uh, to announce for Extreme Rules. And that match is <laughs> one of the Golden Gods. An honorary golden god. He's not really a golden god. He's just kind of there because, well, I had to keep him on the payroll and might as well use him. So, uh, yes, that's right. Mikey, Michael, Mike. Mike, you know, Michael, Mikey. He will be uh, at Extreme Rules in a match trying to finally win against another loser, Sebi. Yep, that's right. Sebastian Penis Scott, he uh, came to me and said, "King, I gotta, I gotta do anything to prove to you that I can be in that predictions championship role." I, he's like, "I want it, 
but I didn't actually win, so I never even actually proved your, myself to you. So I said, okay, Sebi, how about you go against the worst golden god and see if you can win? <laughs> I he, he agreed to it. So at Extreme Rules, we'll be having Sebi versus Mikey. Uh, Mikey trying to prove to us that he belongs, and Sebi trying to prove to me that he belongs. They both trying to prove they belong. I guess one of them will prove in the end, unless they tie. That would be shitty. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they have a chance to uh, boost themselves in the rankings here. Sebi especially, considering that flop that he had last month, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but Sebi did also send me another message uh, just last night, actually. He sent me a video recording in which he 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 replied with uh he sent the video and then he replied with the message to prove to you why I can take anything that you shove at me and well I watched the video and I'm about to show it to you and boy it, it is a doozy so here it is all right. I'm here to talk to you all today about something very important. And no, it's not Jesus. Look. Oh, last few weeks for me have been a lot of nerves and everything leading up to my championship match. And you know what? I was fine up until then. I it was like no sweat. I could take on Lou. I could take on anybody I want to. And I'm going to get that title whether any means necessary, okay? So that's my mindset going into this thing. Then all of a sudden, this Australian dude decides to like walk in and just take it away from me. That's not how it works around here, buddy. I mean, you know. I mean, I guess it does because of the corrupt guy running this thing. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Do you not realize how how many times I've been screwed over, okay? Just look at just look at any time like sure first few times that was my fault like I wasn't ready for like a main event you know caliber uh, match yet like when I faced Brandon you know like like uh, he beat me easily I wasn't ready for the main event any time after that I got screwed over and that's just fact okay so when you look at the history of the KKPL and how it was ran you look and see how badly run it has been. It's just been a bunch of facade around it, run by a bunch of corrupt babies who can't take losing at least once, and don't even know the matter of what sport is, you know? It's not even like a wrestling thing, it's just playing fair, you know? It's not hard, just take a loss every once in a while. So, look, I, I mean, I've already addressed that, like, I don't like the environment around me, but, you know, I'm trying to change it, but it hasn't budged. So what I'm here today to show you is that I'm not afraid to take on anything that comes in my way. I'm not afraid to jump through any like loopholes or anything that you know Kang or any of his cronies you know throw at me. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Which is why right here, right now, I'm gonna eat this hot pepper live on air. You know? Oh, it smells like death. Okay. So just look at this thing. Look at this thing. That was a Carolina Reaper. I'm not afraid of anything that comes in my way. Except for maybe chewing this because this is a bit hard. But look, here's the thing. This thing is the hottest pepper in the world. How many Scoville units is it? 2.2 million, okay? So if I can take on 2.2 million Scoville units, imagine what I'm going to do with Mikey at Extreme Rules or anything that comes my way after that. See how I do it? So let's... <laughs> let's look at the predictions right here. Not predictions. <laughs> the people in there. So Lou... <coughs> when I'm in the bathroom. Lou... You have that title for... <laughs> You know that time? Oh god. You know that title for 292 <laughs> You know that title for 292 days and you did nothing with it. Okay? 
and you are unable to do anything entertain entertaining with it. You know, skip Lou, skip Lou. Look, Lou and Kang, they're, they're best buddies, okay? They don't know what on earth they're doing. They, they just want to be best buds and win all the time, okay? And that's not good, and that's not playing fair with me at all. Do you not realize that this is something that people want to like? This is something people want to be able to watch. <laughs> and that's just being ruined by you two, okay? Lou held that title for nearly a year and did basically nothing with it. <laughs> basically nothing with it. And yet he just wants to prance around and act like he's the be best? No. No, that's stupid. And then Kang just gives him the right to do so and pulls some strings for him to even get, get him there in the first place. That's stupid also, you know? <laughs> and then, like, he wants to surround himself with, like, all these golden boys and whatever. And it's like, that's an outdated, you know, concept. Just let your roster be like a roster and let the top float to the top and let the bottom float to the bottom. It's just simple. And it's much easier and efficient. <sighs> and then he wants to surround himself with as many people as possible so then people like me who see through that, don't get to him. <coughs> and then... Oh, God, the smoke isn't helping at all. And then... <coughs> and then Mikey comes around and he's like, I, I can't do this anymore, you know? That sort of thing. Like, he, like, all of a sudden, he just lost all his confidence. I blame King for that, you know? Like, he just built, he just told him that he wasn't the best and he needed to join him in order to be better. That's not, that's not good at all. That's stupid, man. Like, like, King has no clue how to run, how to run anything in the league, okay? <sighs> You know, look, Mikey, I hate that hot pepper. I'm not afraid to face anything, even if it is hurting my mouth and insides right now, okay? You're facing a man who's not scared of anything right now. You're facing a man with everything to lose, and I am facing a guy with nothing to lose, okay? In Come Extreme Rules, people will see, people will see. What is more dangerous? Someone with everything to lose or someone with nothing to lose? You will see. And once that date comes, man, once that date comes, you will see the man with everything to lose will come forth and beat the guy with nothing to lose. Oh, God. Yeah. So, if you... Uh, Come Extreme Rules, I'm not one of the Mikey that we've been seeing. The Mikey we've been seeing is the Golden God Baby that I've been, 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 been complaining about with the other people. Uh, I can't get my word straight. I know. I don't want the Mikey Crafts that's been complaining about how he can't get stuff down, how he can't win. I want the Mikey Crafts that we saw a year ago face Allen in one of the best matches in KKPL history at Money in the Bank. And he beat him. He beat him. Okay? I knew Mikey was going to win that match. Trust me on it. Okay? I knew Mikey was going to win it. Uh, 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 I knew Mikey was going to win that match because I valued his integrity. I valued his sportsmanship. Something that Kang or Lou or anybody in the Golden Gods doesn't understand, okay? You see, what Golden God means to me is unsportsmanlike conduct turned up to 11 and then add some little cheating sauce to that little beignet, you know, or, or powdered sugar, whatever. I'm not from New Orleans. Kang, you know what a beignet is, you know? 
Very, let me put that on the milk for a second. You see, oh, see the hat, I'm not gonna throw it. You see, come extreme rules. Mikey's gonna have to pay a lot to the toll, and I am the keeper of that toll, baby. You know that when the time comes, you know that when that June, June 14th, June 14th, hopefully I'm correct on that, June 14th. That when Mikey faces me, he's gonna have to fight against a guy who has a lot to prove. No, 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 not only a lot to prove, to prove that he wants to be in the title picture again, let alone beat it, let alone be in the main event. Because Mikey doesn't think that I am a main event caliber star. He doesn't believe that when he faces me June 14th, no. That he's facing a guy with every intent to win. Sure, I've taken a, quite a few losses before. Hey, I was in a tournament where if you lost, you were out. And I lost twice. Twice! So if you see, like, I've taken a lot of losses. I can't take any more. Especially now. I'm trying to be in the t title picture again, man. I don't want the Mikey cars from a year ago. I, I mean, I do want the Mikey... Oh, God, this pepper's getting me. I want the Mikey car from a year... <coughs> I want a Mike. I want the Mikey cars. I want the one who is so confident in his abilities, even though he lost quite a few times. That happens. It has been to me. Okay, it's even happened to Kang. Okay, and he's fair enough. Look, say what you want about Kang, but he's a great predictor. It's a shame that he has to, you know, not be confident in his own skills enough to not surround himself with people to toy around with everything. You know, I mean, it's really sad. You know. And it's really sad what's happened to you, Mikey. You're a shell of your former self. And I don't want... Oh, God. I don't want you to just show up some extreme rules all lazily and think, oh... Uh, like, lays around like a friggin' sloth. And I don't think, hey, I'm gonna suck. Or, hey, this is gonna be easy work. You need to... You need to realize... <coughs> you need to realize what you're facing is... You're facing a guy who's dealing with 2.2 million Scoville units in his mouth right now. And still gonna throw uh, a promo right now. You know? I mean, barely. I mean, I'm not the best speaker. I mean, ask anyone. But I'm still getting through it, man. I'm still getting through it. You don't know, man. You don't know. Come June 14th, you're gonna see a lot more than just some guy putting a pepper in his mouth. You're gonna see a guy with everything to prove... And come that day, I will beat you. And I don't want the Mikey Carbs from a year ago, like I've said. I don't want the Mikey Carbs that beat Island of M Money in the Bank. I want the Mikey Carbs that was champion, for crying out loud. Who knows when that was. And I want the Mikey Carbs, you know, who who at one point was one of the most entertaining guys on the KKPL roster. He made this thing go afloat even before Smack Talk was a thing, for crying out loud. You know? I mean, come on, man. I want the real Mikey Carbs to show up, and I want him June 14th, and trust me, we will have a match for the ages if he does show up, you know? But if he doesn't, then so what? I mean, do you want to keep on being a shelf your former self, or do you want to be the real Mikey Carbs that I want? <coughs> <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Ah. Oh god. Ah. I'm sorry, John Cena. <laughs> you know, screw it. Screw it. Oh crap. The water. Ah. Come June 14th. You'll get the real Mike. I'm getting the real Mikey cars, whether you like it or not. So yeah, as you can see, Sebi is an actual legit crazy person. And he ate a hot pepper to try and prove that he belongs and try to prove that he can do whatever. He is uh, uh, kind of stupid for that, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe that hot pepper invoked a fire in him. Maybe Mikey has to watch out. Maybe that hot pepper promo invoked a fire in Mikey, and we'll have to see next week when Mikey 
responds to Sebi. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this week's episode of Wednesday Night Smack Talk, the first ever pre-recorded episode. Let me know if you liked it uh, by liking the video. That's an easy way to determine it. Or you can tweet at me. Link will be in the description. Or you can uh, you can say in the premiere chat while it's happening because it is going to be a premiere along with the Luke King cast. Those are two premieres that we have every Wednesday now. Maybe, unless you want this to be live. I don't know. I'm going to see, though. I hope that you uh, that you enjoyed this episode. But if you didn't, let me know. I will change it. Trust me. I respond to fan feedback unlike some other company that revolves around wrestling. <clears throat> yeah, I'm talking to you, Cody Rhodes. Got him. Absolutely destroyed. Just destroyed Sebi's hopes and dreams. Um... If you liked this video, then you'll probably like some of my other content, which every Monday I release Brandon and King's GM Extravaganza, which uh, is GM mode in SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 with me and Brandon. It's not that hard to understand uh, from the titles. Um, also, every single... Well, I was going to say every single today, but that didn't make sense. Every single Wednesday, earlier in the day, you know, the Luke Kane cast comes out, which, if you're subscribed to this channel and you follow it good, then you would know that one came out earlier today, about 11 hours ago, actually. So, go listen to that if you haven't, and go listen to next week's if, you, uh, if you're if you watching this at a late time. Also, uh, every Friday, a video game comes out. I have to say that because it's usually The Wolf Among Us, but I just ended that last week. This week, we'll be having a new game that we're going to be starting, and then I'll be saying that game from now on. Also, SmackDown Saturday comes on every, uh, what's the day? Oh, Saturday, uh, where I play through SmackDown Shut Your Mouth. And that is every series that you need to watch on my channel. If you like this, I'm, I pretty much can guarantee that you'll like that too. But if you don't, go ahead and watch this. That's fine. I'm fine with it. Let me know how you think uh, about this new format in the comments, in the premiere chat, on Twitter, by liking it on Discord, if you're in my Discord, which most of you are. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you get this video in your notifications and all the other ones that I just talked about. Okay, that is it for this episode of Wednesday Night Smack Talk. So now... It's time to say T A J and K Y O U. Thank you, thank you. T A J and K Y O U. Thank you, gang.